Hello everyone, welcome back again to our channel Codus Arcade. I hope every one of you are doing good. And yes, we are here with the third video of our DevOps V2 series. And before even we start, I would like to again request all of you to please like and share our videos with your friends and family. And also please, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to our channel guys and hit the bell icon so that you receive notifications regarding our latest updates. Okay. So Guys, if you remember, we have already started our playlist here. Okay, you can see here guys, if I go to the playlist section and go to the latest playlist here, the DevOps playlist, we have already discussed about the prerequisites and the roadmap of the subject. The subject code is BCSL6570, okay, 6 semester VTU. After that, we have also released the version 1 of the manual and I'm really, really, really happy that you guys have showed so much good response and I have tried my best to share the manual to those who have filled the form, okay. And thank you for all your support, guys. I'll be trying to create more and more content so that it becomes easy for the students and also the faculties to understand the concept, okay. So I really need your support and guys, I need everyone who is new to the channel to subscribe, okay. That is very, very important for me. That really motivates me a lot to create more better content for you guys, okay. As I said, this is the third video of this playlist and here, I will go according to the manual only so that you people can understand that I'm really following that manual and that manual is really worth then only you will understand that. So what I do is just go back here and let me close this not required. Okay. I'll go to this PDF, the manual that I have shared with most of you. Okay. So what we will do is we'll see something here. Okay. So if I show you from the beginning. You can see this is the syllabus. I have just pasted it so that you can have a reference of that here also. After that, this is introduction to our company and myself. Okay, I have given my LinkedIn and YouTube channel links. After that, this is the table of contents with the program outcomes. I mean to say what the students or the faculties, whoever is learning, the participants will understand regarding this. Okay, and yes, after this, we have discussed the overall benefits, what you will learn, what kind of technologies you will be learning, what is really DevOps about, all these things you will learn here, okay. So, after this one comes the prerequisites and here if you go through it, I have given in detail what and all you will be needing while you are starting your journey in DevOps, okay. This is very important, you just go through it, whatever is given here, okay. So, as I have mentioned, Java programming language, operating system, it can be Windows, Mac OS or Linux. Internet connectivity, obviously, that is very important. Then you should have a GitHub account ready because you will be learning about version control also. And here you can see JDK version 17 is preferred. So, please guys, you if you are in the, what to say, higher version also, please downgrade to 17. That is really recommended. IntelliJ idea, at least for developers, Apache Tomcat. I have given you all the links for where you can download. Get Maven, Gradle, I've given you the video links also, Jenkins, Oracle VM, Vagrant, Ansible and Azure, these things will come up, don't worry. Vagrant installation I have not given, Ansible installation I have not given. I am working on them, I'll very soon upload them in our YouTube only, okay. And that will be uploaded in your version 2, okay. Here you can see all the installation links are there and I'll keep on updating them so that you get the updates readily and very soon, don't worry about that. And after that, the important steps have been given, okay. And here, after that, if you see, I have not started from this. Let me go here again and show you something very important, okay. If you see the syllabus, the starting one is introduction to Maven and Gradle, the first experiment. This is not a program, I will again tell you, this is a disclaimer, so please remember this. It is not a experiment like a simple program you will execute and the test case will pass or something and you will get the output. It's not like that. There are lots of steps involved in doing this. So, before even going to Maven and Gradle build tools, we should understand some things very important. So, let's go here and try to follow the manual and try to understand. After software requirements, I will directly go to this part. See, introduction to software development lifecycle and need for version control and build tools. That will be the agenda for today's video. Okay, I'll be talking about the software development lifecycle in 
real time so that you can understand what actually goes on there and we'll be discussing one model say the waterfall model and we'll be discussing many things here okay and then we'll be going on to version control if the video is very long then i'll not continue it here i'll do it in a different one don't worry then only guys it is very important we should go to build tools not before that okay so make sure you remember them fine so to, what i will do is i'll just go to sdlc software development life cycle and tell you about how it is actually working so let's do this now i'll go to this ppt that i've made and let's start with this the waterfall model in the software development life cycle so we will actually understand now what actually happens when a company or a organization takes up a project before even taking up a project what actually happens that and all we'll discuss okay guys this is very important for every student and every person who is learning or eager to learn devops they have to understand this very important okay the first phase in waterfall model is actually requirement gathering and feasibility study okay what happens here i will just give you an idea you have to understand this okay please remember and understand this so here in this case i want to tell you one thing so from the organization okay from the organization a very important person called the business analyst okay the business analyst this guy interacts with the client to take the requirement he or she will go and interact with the client and take up the requirement what kind of project or application do you want i'll say application what kind of application do you want okay this question will be asked to him and based on that he will prepare a document he or she will prepare a document that document is called the client requirement specification or customer requirement specification so i'll write client or customer requirement specification this will not have any code or any modules guys it will only have the idea of what actually the customer or the client wants what kind of application is he or she trying to get from us that idea the business analyst takes from that person the client and brings it to the organization again okay after that what happens this guy the ba the ba has a very important meeting with the senior members okay please remember with the senior members and they prepare another document that is called the srs software requirement specification okay this is s specification this is also s okay this is only possible when they have discussed the feasibility of the project okay this line is very important if you see here feasibility is written here right feasibility means can we take up the project do you have the resources do you have enough resources to take up that project is our company well equipped to take up that project can you handle do you have the servers do you have the tools everything all those things will be discussed in that meeting okay based on that if they think that this project is feasible then they will take up the project and based on that the managers and everyone they will create the software requirement specifications document okay so it is like this just remember from crs it is converted to srs this is very very important guys why i am telling you this is because this is asked to lots of students in the interviews that's why it is very very important because when you are going for devops sdlc models are very very important we have taken up a simple model the waterfall model which is a very traditional model that we always learn that's why i'm taking up this model fine now after that the srs has been created fine based on that srs we can go on to the second phase that is the design phase okay in the design phase what happens is we have 
two important things. Okay, two very important things. Design is also broken up into two important parts. We can by default say that design is divided like this. High level design. and low level design. So HLD and LLD. Fine. If I say high level design, this will be just an abstract. Or we can say overview. So you can say module by module, simple idea that, okay, I will have the login part, I will have the add to cart part, something like that. If, you say, if it is an e-commerce website, it can be like that. Just an overview, not the detail, okay. But in case of low level design, everything will be given in detail. Say this is the login module, here you will have this kind of an UI and something, the button, everything will be in detail, exactly properly written in a proper document so that then the developer can start with the coding part. That is the next phase. You can see, now comes the coding part. After the design is there, then only the developer comes into picture because then they can understand, okay, I have to build this thing. Then only they start, okay. In the coding part, they start writing the code. They write lots of code, lots of code, lots of code. And see, suppose they have come up with something called the one simple application that is working. Okay, now what is the next part? We cannot deploy it directly, right? We have to test it. Yes, then we have to test that application. Correct? Now, imagine when you are trying to test this and then this guy, the client, comes up and says that, hello boss, I want to make some changes there. I did not tell that, sorry for that. See, this is the problem here in the waterfall model. This is what happens. You were doing testing and at that time this guy says that no this is uh, not good this wants to be changed so this kind of things are not allowed in the waterfall model because you can see water flows downwards right it will always go downwards like this and these kind of changes are not entertained therefore waterfall model of the sdlc model is actually suitable for smaller projects where no subtle changes are there fine you hope you understood this this is a very important drawback that you guys need to understand and also tell it to the interviewer or maybe if you are a faculty, you have to tell it to the student. That is very, very important. Fine. Just like water flows downwards, the flow of this execution or the phases is actually downwards. So it is very difficult to go up and do something else. Fine. So this testing is in two types. Manual. Obviously, you guys will know that. Manual and automation depending on whatever you are testing. Okay, if it is a web application, you can use Selenium. If it is a mobile application, you can use APM. It depends on your type of application and uh, what kind of tools you want to use. If it is manual, then obviously you have to do it manually. Everything manually you have to do to get the what? Reports. And here you have to understand that the developer and the tester are really enemies. Okay, the developer and the tester are enemies who actually work for the betterment of the organization, how their target is to build a bug-free application. That is their target. At the end, they fight whole day and they look and make sure that the application is bug-free and error-free. That is what they are fighting for. This guy will say, no, this is not working. This guy will say, no, this is working. And finally, they come up with something that is really good and which the people like while using. That is the target. Okay. Say, suppose after testing, everything is fine and they have decided now to deploy that. Okay. That is the next phase. Hope you are understanding. Okay. So now they use some tools and deploy it. Okay. After deployment, now what is the phase? You can take about anything. There are lots of things. There are lots of servers, lots of clients that you can use for deployment. You can use AWS server. In our case, we'll be learning about Azure deployment and all. So that kind of things, any cloud server you can use. Okay, got it. This kind of things. We'll talk about this very deeply. Right now, I just want to give you an overview. So no, I'm not taking too much time explaining this. Fine. And after deployment, obviously, there will be lots of things that you have to maintain there. Comes the maintenance phase. Okay, and because I told you this is actually something that has lots of drawbacks. 
changes are not entertained and that's why it has a drawback and therefore we actually will be moving from these traditional models to our very well known models that is one of it which is the agile model this drawback that i showed you has given birth to the agile model and agile has in turn given birth to what to the devops that we have been introduced in vtu and therefore our youtube channel code circuit has bought the devops vtu full playlist where i'll be teaching you all of these things one by one so in this one i have told you the disadvantages of the sdlc waterfall model and then now what we will do is we will try to learn about agile and for that what i will do is i will create another simple video where i'll be teaching you about agile and all the concepts of agile in theory fine then we will be going on to devops but before that also if we go back here let me discard that whatever i had written there fine let's go back here and show you fine guys now i hope you understood about the sdlc model and the difficulties that people face while they are working on that part fine then we will go on to agile if you see here these are the theory and the notes that i have given here you can go through it whatever i told you about right now has been given properly about this here okay so just go through it you will understand that fine see you can see testing deployment everything is there so i did not want to go deep into it i just want you to give an overview because if you say this in the interview no that is more than enough don't have to worry and the maintenance you can see this diagram is also here requirement analysis design coding testing deployment maintenance after that the problems have been written rigid and inflexible because it is rigid you cannot make changes very easily see changes cannot be made once a phase is completed it's very difficult to go back actually that's why i said it is very good for smaller projects these are the disadvantages therefore you can see we are introducing agile agile makes everything very simple so i will not make this video any more longer i will create another simple short video where i will be explaining you about agile and you can go through this pdf and learn about agile but i will also make another video on this very short video guys it will come very soon don't worry about it and there i will explain you about agile then we'll be going on to understanding about build tools but before that i will show you what happens in the manual process okay so stay tuned for that i hope you like this video and please go through whatever i have explained and try to recall them again and try to draw that diagram on your own fine and try to understand that guys so this is it about this video i will come up with the next video very soon where i will be talking about agile don't worry about that for the time being i hope you like this video if you really like this video please give this video a thumbs up hit the bell icon and also if you are new to the channel please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notifications about the latest updates okay till the next time this is saurabh signing off bye bye thank you and happy learning bye